So this is um, a patient I did recently. Um, he's 67. He's got severe coronary artery disease. His EF's less than 10%. 10, 10%. He actually wears a life vest. Um, he's got end-stage renal disease. He's got an AKA on the other side, and now he's got non-healing wounds and an ischemic right foot. And I think this is the perfect case to illustrate how not everybody is a surgical candidate, but at the same time, this guy's relatively young. Um, he does use an, a prosthetic on his AKA to pivot, and he uses this right foot as a platform to pivot and transfer and still maintain some functional independence. So limb salvage is exquisitely important to him. Um, he's got small wounds, and so when you think of who's a candidate for open versus endovascular, this is the patient that really needs endovascular revascularization. Um, he had had a prior intervention with recanalization of his posterior tibial artery um, back in uh, last summer, but really didn't improve his tobracheal indices. It only went to, from a TBI of 0.45 to class 2-3. So he still in the wound zone wasn't able to heal as a result of this. Um, and you can see here that his posterior tibial just kind of washes out and really isn't providing a ton of flow into the foot, which is why the original um, revascularization attempt was probably not successful in giving him the complete resolution of his ischemia. So the plan here now um, with this angiogram was to go after this anterior tibial artery because you can see here just a, you know he has a lot of below ankle disease but you can see a wisp of a pedal arch coming into view and so that's likely the angiosome that really is going to provide meaningful flow into the foot um, and so we um, got across this proximal AT with a wire, not surprising, nothing would cross. We brought Javelin up and you can see, we're just giving forward pressure and you can slowly see the catheter just advance and kind of jump forward as it reaches those really difficult areas. Um, one thing I do want to point out is that just, you know, Sam talked about this a little while ago, is that with just Javelin, even though it's not a balloon-based therapy, you can see that we've got some luminal gain in that anterior tibial artery now. So it did create a micro channel of, of a lumen for us. Um, and just like in, as he showed in his case, Javelin, in this case, there was such a long segment diffuse disease, we really needed to come back with the E8 to lithotripsy the entire anterior tibial artery. Um, I'm a big proponent in patients with renal disease who have those lead pipe arteries that you need to modify the calcium, not just in the areas of focal occlusive disease, but of the whole entire artery because we're not just trying to get luminal gain, but we're changing the compliance of the vessel, trying to get pulsatile inflow to the foot. And you can see here after our definitive E8 treatment, he's got excellent DP runoff and you can now see the um, angiosomes into the toes starting to light up and that arch really starting to become visible. Um, and so clearly at this round, we picked the correct tibial vessel to go after because he's now got really good perfusion into his foot. Um, Fortunately, he showed up at his one month follow up. Um, he, um, I've actually converted to PATs in my outpatient vascular lab because my techs love it. They're really good at it. And I think it actually gives you more physiologic information about the um, angiosome of the area of revascularization. So you can see here, what I'm really looking for is the perfusion through that arcuate and dorsal metatarsal arteries, which is class one, which is essentially normal perfusion to the extremity. Um, and he, you know, no longer has rest pain and those wounds are healing up nicely. Yeah, it's an excellent case. So let's talk about the area that usually challenging to cross in below the knee, which this kind of proximal AT when it can take that sharp bend. Mm -hmm. How easy was it to cross it or did you have to deliver energy as you crossing that area? I had to deliver, I was basically delivering energy the whole way. I mean, I think those are the hardest ones because they often take that right angle turn. It's 
so heavily calcified. You really don't have that smooth trackability that you would in a, in a less diseased vessel. Um, I do think the integrate approach is essential when you're crossing those. Coming up and over, you're setting yourself up for failure um, when you're doing those cases. You need a straight shot and maximum pushability. But I do think delivering the pulses as you're crossing those occlusive lesions sets yourself up for success. So you're, you're, you're pushing forward, you're delivering the energy and slow and steady and just let it, let it, let it work and then eventually you feel it pop forward. And I don't actually, I don't actually move from the patient. So my tech is in the back and he's managing the three-way stopcock, making sure that they're flushing forward. He's pushing the device to deliver the, the pulses and I'm just managing the catheter so I can give that kind of smooth trans delivery of the pulses and then cross. I love it. I think this is another thing where the importance of having a tech or fellows residents who are, are, are in service on this device because as you said, it's always challenging you. You're a, you finish up and then you have to come to the other side and you have to prep it and you go back or you just continue pushing forward and they're doing all this work together. One of the tricks that one of the, one of the physician has taught me, again, this is not how Javelin is supposed to be. It's not a part of the IFU, which is, but how they do it is he doesn't lock the stopcock. He just continue flushing while they're pushing and while they're delivering. They just feel like this is faster and you're achieving the same thing as you, as long as you're not having bubbles creating in that micro channel. Well, Dr. Banyan, thank you so much for sharing, for sharing this case today and for all the other cases and your input. We, we loved having you here and hopefully we can have you in a future recordings. Thank you for, thank you for today. Thank you so much for having me and I'll look forward to seeing you at some meetings sometime soon. And um, I think it's great. I think the multi-specialty collaboration is going to be key to us offering the best care for our patients. Thank you again. See you soon.